Alright, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the broadcast. This is, uh, this is unexpected to say the least. Uh, <laughs> if you're coming from uh, the link I posted on Twitter, you know this is a little bit last minute. So basically I'm just sitting here trying to get a Dota game going with a couple of my friends and uh, the admins from uh, the Amateur Dota 2 League messaged me and they said, Hey, I need you to cast a game. I said, okay, alright. Just for you, just for you, because I like you guys. And, uh... So they, they dunked me into this game. We're looking at Tom plus four feeders versus Glimpse. Um, and apparently they've already played game one. So we're going into game number two out of a best of three. Um, so a little bit of an awkward scenario. My apologies if I uh, if the broadcast is a little bit uh, scattered. <laughs> As I said, I uh, threw up my streaming software. I had everything ready to go within uh, just a couple minutes here. So... Everything's a little bit rough, a little bit rough, but nevertheless, nevertheless, we are underway now. So it looks like Tom plus four feeders did take game number one. So uh, they're looking to clinch themselves a spot moving forward in uh, the 82L season three uh, open, which is uh, it's been been an incredible tournament this far. So um, it looks like Tom plus four feeders took out uh, Team Lucid, who were previously a, a Pretty big powerhouse within uh, the tournament. However, they've had some roster issues, fell apart. I think they actually officially disbanded, so uh, they weren't doing too well. Um, uh, who is it? Farmed and Dangerous. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. Glimpse, that's who I was looking for. Glimpse. Uh, they beat Equals 5 and Rampage City on their way up to this match. And Rampage City is a uh, pretty good team as well. So both teams earning their way into this spot and... Uh, I, I didn't see game number one, because, like I said, I wasn't even home for game number one. But uh, hopefully it'll be a good one. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Anyways, getting into the draft here, let's talk about this game that is currently right in front of us, right in front of our faces. Um, we've got the Invoker and the Ember Spirit Bando right off the bat. Um, nothing out of the ordinary there. Two heroes that we've seen a lot in... Uh, I mean, they're, they're pretty much 100% pick ban right nowadays. And, uh, yeah, some interesting stuff. Let's see where they go for. Centaur, Ben. Oh, who would have guessed that one? Who would have guessed that one? Glimpse. Are they going to ban out Death Prophet or... Um, who's that other hero? There's another hero that everybody loves to ban nowadays, too. Nyx Assassin. Alright, that wasn't who I was thinking of, but uh, Nyx, fair enough. Annoying little bugger. Anyways. Man. I just realized that I am missing Vikings to... Uh, to do this broadcast here. I'm gonna have to catch the VOD, or the, uh, I'm just gonna have to download a little later on, but, uh, man, that show is good. That show is good. Ragnar Lothbrok is my friggin' hero. If you haven't watched it, the History sh uh, History Channel show, Vikings, man, it is so, so, so good. I watched the entirety of the first two seasons in, like, half a week. Like, I, I got hooked on it, and it was just like every waking second I was watching Vikings, and now I'm caught up and I have to wait week by week, and it's just obnoxious as hell. Anyways, stuff actually happening in the game here. We got the Naga Siren picked up by Tom plus four feeders right off the bat, and then uh, Lincoln and uh, Lincoln, <laughs> Lincoln and Visage taken right out, uh, right out of the gates by Glimpse Dota here. So, uh, Dazzle taking by Tom plus four feeders. I definitely love this Naga Dazzle combo, and um, this actually works really well as, as a support duo. Uh, we've been seeing Naga play it a lot as a uh, carry and a uh, mid mid roll um, because she's just becoming so much more or it's becoming so much more popular with that radiance build nowadays. But um, these two do make a really really nasty support duo um, because of mirror image. Really, um, with this type of build, you can actually there's just there's just synergy all over the place between these couple of heroes. So I'll list a few ways that uh, this works out. First of all. If you net or song somebody and create a bunch of illusions, Dazzle can heal all of them and you get like a full freaking huge damage nuke onto whoever is standing near, near those illusions. So that's synergy number one. As well, Naga's Riptide shreds armor, which means that uh, they're obviously more susceptible to physical damage, which is done by Poison Touch. Poison Touch does completely physical damage. So if uh, you hit a Riptide on him, throw a Poison Touch on him, it makes him take even more damage, and it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, physical, actually, Shadow Wave is also physical. I, I, I keep forgetting that one is. It always tricks me, yeah. Uh, Dazzle is incapable of doing magical damage. I, I forgot that. So, um, both of his really high damage abilities are physical. She has Armor Shred, and she has Lockdown, and she has Illusions to give the Shadow Wave targets. So, 
As well, I mean, they're amazing late game synergy too. Because when you get into a fight, you can song a siren and instantly weave your entire team, and then you get the five se or the seven seconds of song to actually like build up the armor stacks because they rise slowly as you go. Um, armor per second is like 1.5 at max rank, so um, those seven seconds you earn yourself an extra lot of armor. I can't do math in my head right now. I'm a little frazzled, but um, definitely two heroes that freaking awesome together. Um, now that said, Lycan, Visage, eh, alright. Visage known to get uh, Medallion, Lycan known to get Medallion. They both like to shred armor and blow bitches up, so it's a lot of damage between the two, but uh, not much control. I mean, uh, Lycan doesn't have any CC of his own, and uh, there's nothing but Grave Chill coming out of Visage, so uh, they're definitely lacking in crowd control right now, and we'll, we might see them address that with their next couple picks. We'll have to see. The Bane and the Nature's Prophet were the bands out for Tom plus four feeders, and uh, Ancient Apparition was the band from Glimpse. They're now looking towards their fourth. We'll have to see what that is in just a momento, and uh, it, it is the Venomancer, so... Um, yeah, I don't know if Venom, Venom, uh, yeah, I don't know if Venom would have been picked, but anyways. Oh shit, we got that Phage guy up in my chat offering to do stats for the next game. I'm totally getting him in here. If you if you're watching Phage, bro, you actually I don't know if I have you added on Steam, so add me on Steam, and uh, I'll get you in for the next game. I like having stats. Some interesting shit right there. Anyways, Bat Rider. I uh, guess picked up by Glimpse, so there's there's a little bit of crowd control. They get a uh, couple. Well, they got the lasso. I mean, lasso is really good for those single target eliminations, which is uh, which is perfect. I mean, that's that's what they're kind of aiming for right now. Lycan is kind of just a hero who just you know goes. He just pops into his ultimate. He chases one person down and just attacks until they're dead. And Visage, same thing. Lots of single target bursts. Not much in the way of crowd control though. And uh, Bat Rider, obviously. You know, really good for that as well. So it's going to be to their advantage to uh, kind of stray away from team fights until they're in an advantageous position. So they're going to want to, the, the way they're going to want to play this game is just kind of dance around the outside looking for, you know, somebody on Tom Plus 4 to get out of position and then snatch him up. Now that said, Shadow Demon is an incredible counter to Batrider because uh, you can either Demonic Purge uh, Batrider as he's walking away or you can disrupt either. Uh, either the target that he has lassoed, or you can uh, disrupt Batrider as well, and it just keeps him sitting in place. You can't really get somebody out of position like that, so uh, Batrider's going to have to be really sneaky with how he does things. As well, even more redonkulous synergy. So, it looks like the Naga Siren is going to be the carry role. Uh, I'm guessing uh, I'm guessing one position here instead of the mid. Now, Dazzle Shadow Demon, uh, for many of the same reasons, are an incredible duo together. Uh, Soul Catcher is obviously just straight up um, damage amp. It's it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's um, uh, it doesn't matter if it's physical or magical. Um, so it does the exact same thing that uh, Riptide does for all of Dazzle's abilities. And as well, disruption works out really well because it sticks two illusions right on top of the hero. You disrupt them. They come out of disruption with two illusions right next to them, and then you heal those illusions. And it's a freaking huge damage nuke. So um, these two heroes have incredible synergy as a support duo and work really, really well aggressively. Generally, these are two supports that are treated very defensively. You want to put them on a defensive lane to keep your heroes alive. But when they're together, they complement each other so well and dish out so much damage while keeping people alive that you can go you can go so aggressive with them. And I mean, I. I don't know if they're going to want to go aggressive. Generally, you want to keep Naga in a safer position so that she can farm up that Radiance. But if they really feel confident with their coordination, I feel that they could totally go aggro and shut this Lycan down. Um, Visage, I mean, Visage and Shadow Shaman, it's a little bit of crowd control, it's a lot of damage, but if you if you coordinate it just right and you take the right heroes out of the fight, um, you know, you can really, really make that lane work for you. So, definitely something to keep in mind. Um, now, going into the fourth pick, we'll see what Tom Plus Four Feeders manages to pick up here, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be interesting. Gonna be interesting. Slark. Slarkity Slark, we got a fish on the board, okay. Alright, so, uh, Slark, another really, really fun hero, um, and he works out really well. Hey, there's Feech Guy. Alright, I'll get him in on the, uh, next game. Anyways, so, um, so Slark, awesome, okay, so... Uh, I'm loving Tom Plus 4's draft, man. They they are really, really smart about how they're doing this here. Okay, so, um, Slark, as well, he can actually purge Lasso and Shadow Shaman's Shackles if he gets a Dark Pact off at the same time. So the only two abilities that they really have on Glimpse to lock people down can be completely purged by Slark just using an ability that he uses on cooldown anyways. On top of that, 
If Batrider grabs somebody else on the team, the Shadow Demon, the Dazzle, the Naga, whoever else, Slark can pounce on him, leash him, and then he can't get away. You can't force Staff out of that shit. Actually, can you force Staff out of Slark pounce? I don't think you can. No, you can't. You can definitely not. So, um... So you can just pounce on him, keep him from running away, and start beating away on him. And, uh, you know, it's good escape. I have a feeling Slark is going to be an amazing pick here. I mean, there's not even that much AoE on the board. There's, uh... You know, there's the uh, Batrider uh, Firefly. Um, but aside from that, there's not much to deal with this Slark when he goes into his ulti form either. So he can just run around in circles and uh, pick off whoever he pleases. So I am, I adore this draft. They are, they are thinking, they're thinking with their noggins here. Let me tell you. Now, Glimpse, that said, they do have a really, really nasty lineup. I mean, uh, this is a lot of damage on their trialing. Not enough control, I think, but uh, definitely a lot of damage. Batrider, always an incredibly potent hero that can get in insanely out of control if he gets uh, the items he wants early. And, uh, of course, the OD, same thing as well. OD not as popular as he used to be, but uh, starting to get back up there as he's uh, just, I don't know. I don't know. Viper's still on the board, though. If Tom grabs... What? Radiant team pick. Oh, okay. Okay. Alright. 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 So I think this is going to be a safe lane Wraith King. Um, a mid lane Naga Siren and the Slark on the off lane. Uh, I figured because of uh, just how redonkulous this tri lane would have been, they would have gone for that. But uh, it seems like they are content with going the with the um, additional redonkulousness that is Dazzle, Shadow Demon, and Wraith King. Um, I mean, Wraith King... He doesn't have that perfect synergy, but he's still a really, really nasty tri lane hero. I mean, he can jump in there, he's got the stun, he's got the aura, he does damage, he's a strength hero, you can't kill him, you just... Nah, man, nah, man, nah. It's ridiculous. So, I think, uh, I think I like this. Now, it seems to me like they're also going to be going aggressive with it as well. So, Dazzle, Shadow Demon, and Wraith King on an aggressive tri lane. Naga Siren on mid and Slark solo safe. I think, is going to be the lanes. Um, it could also be Slark mid and Naga solo safe, um, but we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to keep an eye on it, because both those heroes can really kind of do it however they please. Alright, so, let's get down to introducing the lineups here. Uh, we've got Angra, going to be taking up that Lycanthrope, going to be heading down towards the bottom lane. Lutz is going to be taking the Batrider up towards top, that's an off lane Batrider. Hellfire is going to be playing on the OD in mid, and... Uh, Bitrate? Bitrate? He's going to be taking the Shadow Shaman down towards bottom. Subway, Subway Flatiza Pizza Yum. Going down towards bottom. Now, this guy loves to uh, loves to play with his name, man. He was, he was talking in the lobby chat about uh, having a rap battle with me over Subway toppings. And I tried, and then I realized I had to get the stream running. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Okay. Alright, no, they are doing the tri -lane. They're doing it. Wraith King mid? Wraith King mid, Slark solo safe? Alright! Alright, cool. I'm down for it. 30 seconds to I'm down. I mean, okay, so... Wraith King mid, it's a little it's a little bit gimmicky. They're gonna do it, and that's totally fine. Um, but I'm not sure it's gonna work out well. Um, the big disadvantage that uh, Outworld of Hour has nowadays is the fact that, um, you know, it's really hard to get Astral Imprisonment off because of the range reduction. But uh, Wraith King, of course, range or melee hero, he's, uh, he's going to not have any mana. He's never going to use this stun for the first 10 minutes of the game. Um, so, kind of a kind of a odd lane setup here, but I think they actually would have been better putting the Slark mid. Eh, eh, I don't know. We'll see. I think the Wraith King will do just fine. Like, I don't think they can actually kill him or shut him down, really, like, but... He's not going to have a great time. But like I said, this is going to be the aggro tri lane, and uh, once again, this is just so nasty. And it doesn't look nasty because you got two really defensive supports and a uh, carry that really relies on getting early farm. But in this exact scenario with these exact heroes, it can get really, really ugly. And, uh, oh, yeah, look at this. They're going for it right now. Riptide is up and uh, heal, and look at that. Over half of his health in just spells before the auto attacks, and he drops even lower. And what do they what do they burn? 120 mana here, 80 mana here, and 80 mana there. That, that's it. I mean, they can they can do it all again. If Shadow Demon gets another disruption, this Lycan is dead, gone, out of here. So um, definitely something we should be paying attention to. I think it's going to be a uh, I think this is going to be a crazy little bit of a back and forth here. Anyways, mid lane. Like I said, I think Wrath King's going to have a bit of a rough time, but he should 
be fine. I mean, uh, the lifesteal aura that he has is going to provide him with everything that he needs. Now, uh, Slark versus Batrider. I think this favors the Batrider just a little bit, but uh, Slark can... Slark can hold his own. I think once he gets to 6, he's going to be doing a lot better off. Because, I mean, he's already burned through two tangos, and it's only a minute and 25 seconds in. We are going to have a pause right here, and uh, Tactical OMG Report calls out FTK. This will actually give me a chance to go back and uh, introduce Tom plus 4 feeders, because I didn't do that. Went over uh, all of Glimpse's lineup, and just didn't go back. <laughs> Anyways. Defense 121. Gonna be playing uh, that Shadow Demon down here. FTK gonna be taking on that uh, Dazzle 4000 MMR Eric. He's gonna be taking on that Naga Siren. Up in the mid lane, we got Smurfheim, who's actually a stand in, and uh, I've received word that uh, apparently he's a pro player? Or a pro rated player? Um, I don't know. That's that's an assumption, or I don't think it's an assumption. I think it's word of mouth that's been passed around, so uh, could be looking to see him making some plays here, but I don't know, man. I've never seen him play before, so who knows. GKTA going to be taking that Slark up on the top lane. That's about it. <laughs> like I said, man, he's committed to the name. Look at this. Relish, mayo, tomato, all toppings at your local subway. It's <laughs> awesome. This guy needs a sponsorship, man. Sandwich sponsorship. That's how you really rake in the esports money. You get free subway subs. <laughs> Cold Cuts, man. They're the best. Cold Cut Trio. You guys know that uh, despite the fact that there are three meats in that sandwich, they are all turkey. They are all turkey. Alright, sorry. Sorry for that uh, brief pause there. My, uh... Girlfriend's not doing too well. She's a little bit sick. She's uh, not having a great time there, and she's just telling me she's gonna go to bed. So, it's telling her good night, telling her I love her, making sure everything's all right. Anyways, visage now just harassing this naga back a little bit. Get the hell out of here, you silly fish! But uh, I think one of these heroes is gonna take a beating pretty damn soon here. I think when. Uh, I think when Tom plus four feeders here gets to level two and everybody has their abilities is when it's going to be killing time because they'll have uh, Soul Catcher, which is more damage amp. Oh, they turn it back around. Here goes the disruption. They're going to go for it. Shadow Shaman taking a lot of damage, but the Soul Assumption flies out to Naga. She drops really low, but we'll pop off the sound and we'll survive for now. Nobody dying, but everybody getting really close. Oh my god, Poison Touch goes out on the Lycan. What was he doing there? He's going to drop. Oh my god, is he going to fall? He's got the damage amp on him. He's got the Poison Touch going. There's still action coming out here. The Visage is looking for the Shadow Demon. It is going to be the first blood, and Lycan will not pop. So, Shadow Demon falls. And in the mid lane, the uh, Skeleton King, Wraith King, he's going to fall. So, uh, Tom plus four feeders, as much as I praise their lineup, they, uh, they dropped two kills really early on. And, I mean, th th that was kind of a, a janky engagement there because uh, Glimpse decided to go like the second before all three of these heroes hit level two like they were so close and then shadow shaman was just like we're doing it i'm gonna fuck and they just jumped on him and uh they they didn't have the appropriate combo that they wanted if they had poison touch and if they had soul catcher right off the bat i think that engagement would have gone a lot differently but uh instead it uh, ends up with a kill in the favor of glimpse and the trilane's looking looking a little bit better now like i said it's uh it's kind of weak, but you can never really underestimate Visage. That's a ton of damage that can get thrown out at any point in time, so uh, crazy shit. Anyways, missing more kills because I'm a complete scrub. Up in the top lane, Batrider gets uh, picked off by, uh, I think this was just Wraith King spawning and TPing straight up to top lane. And, uh, huh, I wonder how that happened. I, I really wish I could have seen that because there's an off lane ward for Batrider just sitting right here. I mean, unless, like... Creep wave was pushed up, and Wraith King came in around here. I don't know. Engagement bottom. Nope. Never mind. Pings. Pings. No engagements. Oh, there they're going. Now it's coming up, and uh, the Soul Catcher catches the wrong target, so the sh heal doesn't do as much. But they do get onto the Shadow Shaman. They're going to drop him really low. He's going to turn around and get the Shackle on Naga, and it might result in her dropping. There is not enough 
for a soul assumption quite yet. The shallow grave goes out. The wolves are chasing, and I think Naga is gonna fall. Yeah, but it will result in the visage dropping. Yeah, he's he's way too low. There it goes. So they managed to get two kills out of that, and uh, although they lost the Naga, they did manage to get themselves both the supports from the enemy team. So a carry for two supports, not fantastic. I mean, um, it's it's all right, it's comparable, I guess, but uh, I mean. Naga Siren is the one person you want in this lane to continue living, and, uh, yeah, anyways. <laughs> Shitty, I suck. <laughs> He's got the most CS in the game. <laughs> yeah. Wraith King asks, how's middle teal? And she says, what's your CS? And she says, Shitty, I suck. Anyways, that, that gives us a good segue to going into the uh, last hits and denies here. 16 and 8 up on the Outworld Devourer. He's leading the charts up in the top lane. We got that uh, little Slarky Fish got in second place with uh, 12 and 5. 10 and 1 on the uh, mid lane Wraith King. I didn't expect him to be that high, actually. Um, 11 and 1 on the off lane Bat. And uh, then the Naga sitting at 7 while the Lycan is at 9. The rest of the carries, and uh, that's about it. Yes, somebody's asking in chat, if this is game two, this is most certainly game two. Uh, Tom plus four feeders took game one, and uh, yeah. Fortunately, I didn't get to cast game one, because I just got home and was eating dinner, and these people were like, yo, we got cast game. And I'm like, okay. But anyways, jumping onto the uh, Shadow Shaman, and he wasn't going to survive for long. He gets caught out. Now they're looking for the like, and he's slowed up. He's got no mana. He's got nowhere to go. He's got no items. He's got nothing. And it's just a matter of who's going to get the last hit now. It is the Wraith King. So, uh, roaming around, making uh, making use of that stun. Getting the action on the board. Tom plus four feeders now taking it back. Three to five is the kill score. And uh, despite giving up those two early kills, they are now sitting in pretty damn good position. And are looking towards maybe getting a tier one tower right off the bat here. I don't know if they're going to have enough creeps and illusions. I think they will. It's going to be down to fortify TPs to save this tower if Glimpse does want to contest it. Um, we'll have to see in just a moment here, but no, they're just going to leave it go. And uh, Naga Siren gets the tower, now sitting on 1,100 gold, and... Has she purchased any items? Nope. Nope, just 1,100 gold. That's it. Mid lane, OD still farming up. Getting a lot of CS under his belt, but uh, not getting the kills and experience that the Wraith King is. So, uh, I think Wraith King's just kind of going to wait for a f place where he can find some passive farm. Um, and then really abuse that. What? I, I missed another kill in the- oh my god. Like I said, I'm scattered, man. I am scattered as hell today. Like I said, I, I, I did so much running around today, I was like walking downtown for like an hour and a half looking for- oh god, it was, it was just- it was just balls. Anyways, coming out on the mid lane is the support duo with the double damage rune looking for that outworld devourer. And uh, there they go, the heal goes out, he's going to Astral Imprison up to Shatter Demon, and now the Batriders come in, looking for blood, is he going to find someone? He's going fast, not going to grab. And, uh, Lane, just going to just gonna mellow out here, and uh, both teams going to back off. Looked like it could have gone either way really quickly there, but uh, not going to be the case. Alright, uh, throwing illusions around, being a real bitch. Just, uh, just, just poke him, just poke him. I'm curious about this. Is she going straight to Fusel with this Robe of the Magi? Or is she just or did she just choose to get like the Intel component of power treads? Maybe Maybe drums? Drums Naga? Huh. I don't know. This is kind of curious. Most Nagas most Nagas nowadays prefer to uh just go directly for the radiance, just like nothing. Just like boots radiance. It's like quelling blade radiance, but uh yeah, she, she, she picks up the power chest first. She's gonna find the Shadow Demon, gets that, oh, almost gets the net up, but gets uh, sheeped up instead. Now the disruption goes out on Shadow Demon, he's gonna drop there, and uh, the Noxire did get the kill there. 3-7 to seven, the kill total, and I don't think they're gonna find anything else there. Nah, not the case. Dazzle mid lane, man. I know I know Dazzle was playing the support role this game, but I love playing Dazzle mid lane. I've been I've been experimenting with some fun mid laners that recently uh most recently, as of last night, I was trying Tidehunter mid. And uh god, that shit is OP. That shit's OP. And uh I mean it doesn't do as well against like lane dom like really heavy lane dominators like the OD or like uh perhaps an invoker or like a viper or something. But I mean if you end up against like a DK, maybe a you know, maybe a Naga or like a Slark or something like that, you go Tidehunter man, you get that bottle up. 
You can just goosh all day long. You just goosh and anchor smash, and then uh, you get a get a few minutes into the game, you get your blink dagger up, and it's just ravages all over the place. It's it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. You should try that shit out. Anyways, Red King coming in from behind the tower, looking for that shadow demon, and he gets popped. He gets the uh, chicken out of Naga, but that's gonna be it. Now the ensnare goes out on Lycan. There, oh, they might finish him off. Yeah, there's a Rayfire blast. Excellent stacking of the CC, and they do manage to get the Lycan because of it. Yeah, the OD is in here, dropping out all the damage he can. They are going to drop the Wraith King. He doesn't have enough mana for his ultimate, so he is going to fall. And now the, uh, oh man, both people trying to run away. Shadow Demon gets caught out and uh, does not make it out, but the Naga Siren did manage to get her TP off, and so she survives. So getting a couple pickups out of that uh, out of that dive there, I guess. They were, they were going real hard, but... It's alright, it's alright. Killing off that Lycan, really hampering him early, is uh, just really going to put a Lycan out of his stride, because, um, I mean, the the big bonus to picking this hero is the really, really strong early and mid-game, and if you can't get those early Roches, if you can't get those early Towers out of him, he's pretty much useless. He's a terrible carry if you can't get an early advantage. I mean, he needs to snowball, and the reason he's really, really good right now is because he has the tools to snowball. But if you go and aggro try, you shut him down, you make sure that he can't even get that Vlad's, you can't, you know, you offer him no mobility, no room to farm, and Lycan starts to fall apart. The pick actually becomes really, 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 really terrible. So, um, you know, it's 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 not going to work out for them in this game, but we'll see. Anyways, action on the mid lane. Grave Chill going out onto the Shadow Demon. He's, uh, he's going to walk himself away from that, though. No problem. Well, so let's swap over to the net worth graph, graph as it's starting to reflect the state of this game a little bit better than the uh, CS charts. OD still sitting on the top of it, however, Slark and the Skeleton King, the Wraith King, sorry, are uh, sitting right on top of the Dire Side. Naga Sire trailing just shortly behind them, and the Batrider and the Lycan just underneath that. So, uh, Lycan just barely richer than the Dazzle, who is uh, actually right in the middle of Mortal Kombat with the uh, Visage. And the Soul Assumption going to fly, oh man, the heal saves him. Just barely. Skeleton King looking for that stun, not going to happen. Now he gets it off, and the Dazzle f falls from coming back into that fight. Not exactly a wise fight to take. Wraith King not going to get out of this one. He's going to try. Maybe he'll get a kill. Nope, he's done. See you, buddy. A couple kills going the way of Glimpse there, and they're uh, starting to even up the kill score once again. 7-9, to nine, getting a little bit closer to closing out that gap. You're looking at 10 minutes and 50 seconds into this game between Tom plus 4 feeders and Glimpse Dota, and uh, an interesting one it's looking, looking to be. It's pretty awesome. This Naga, she's going drums, just... Alright, alright, Treads Drums. I guess it's good. It is good. Makes her a little bit more of a brawler, though. She did, she doesn't play that Rat Dota style as much. You kind of do exactly what she's doing here, which is just, you know, eating up one lane, getting those illusions, and just using them as extra DPS instead of just, like, mobile mobile lane clearing, um, as the Radiance Naga would do. And she's putting a lot of dents in this tower and actually gets it. I didn't think she would get it on that push, but uh, no TP rotation is nothing. And actually, there wasn't a fortify available, but uh, yeah. Anyways, let's take a peek at the items. As uh, some heroes are starting to pick up some of their uh, big value stuff. So, um, looks like Outworld Devourer. This is interesting. He's picking himself up a Rod of Owie, um, and Rod of Owie first on OD. Not a huge fan of it. I prefer he has a little bit more more mobility first. Getting that four staff is so valuable, just because he's a really slow hero and he doesn't have anything to really keep him safe. Um, but eh, eh. Oh my god, there's action here. They grab a guy with the bat rider. Who is that? That's a slark and the fishy gets fried. OD did secure the kill, walks in, grabs the last hit like a complete douchebag, but uh, kill nonetheless. Kill nonetheless. I'll check back on those items in just a second, but it looks like we got a bit of bit of, bit of, bit of tension in the mid lane. Couldn't quite cut it with a knife. She can maybe pry it apart with a crowbar. Anyways, getting in here, the Serpent Wards are down, the tower is taking a beating, and they are going to fortify for this. Are they going to have any more rotations in to help this out, though? The Shadow Demon and the Dazzle are not going to do it by themselves, and uh, Demonic Purge goes out onto the uh, OD, and he's, he's getting a little bit harassed, but not falling quite yet. They need to get rid of these wards, they need to be attacking them, and uh, just not doing it. Try to get the deny, not going to happen, and uh, it was really close. That projectile was right on top, but wasn't quite there, wasn't quite there. Anyways, 8-9 to nine the kill score, and uh, towers almost even. We're looking at a uh, one tower advantage for t uh, Tom plus 4, and uh, Glimpse 
a single tower disadvantage. That's all right, though. That's something they can get back. Easy peasy. The nice push. What's Lycan looking at now? He's he's just all right. So just treads. He does pick up the Vlads now. Now um, this is the uh, problem with Lycan getting shut down early. Is that Roshan powers up as the game goes on, and I believe it's at 15 minutes that uh, he gets cranked up again. So if you cannot manage to get your Vlads and a medallion by 15 minutes, then Roche is significantly harder. I'm, I think he can still do it, but I'm not 100% sure. I think you need um, a little bit of help to do that, or you just need to be really, really, really smart about how you juggle the damage on uh, your Wolves. I'm I'm not 100% sure. I don't play a lot of Lycan, but uh, I believe that's how it works out. 15 minutes without the uh, cup of cores, and you cannot solo the Roshan anymore. So... That said, he still does dish out a huge fuck ton of damage. So if uh, Glimpse does find a little bit of room and they can sneak one or t uh, you know two or three people into that Roche pit, they, they can still secure it anytime they want. So um, it's something they'll have to look out for. Anyways, Naga still being a noxious little rat down on the bottom lane. Uh, now has those drums up and she's saving up the money now. She's got 1300 in the bank. See if she goes towards the Radiance. Maybe she'll just go... I mean, she's kind of going for a Brawler build right now, so we might even see her just go straight to Fusel and just try to, you know, participate in as many early fights as she can instead of trying to uh, play that split-pushy rat game that uh, comes with uh, most Naga Sirens nowadays. Anyways, oh man, Blink Daga's grabbing that Dazzle, and uh, he's going to be... Oh, never mind. I was about to say, he's going to be able to get a Shallow Grave off on himself. There's not enough damage, but holy hell! The, uh... Single orb from the uh, OT mixed with that ether shock, and he just explodes. So uh, Dazzle getting dropped, and the kill score is even. Slark now jumping in. He's going to get the Shadow Demon for sure. Now pops off his ultimate, chasing down on the Visage. Disruption out on the Batrider. He's he doesn't have much to contribute to this fight, but the OD drops the Sanity's Eclipse and picks up the Shadow Demon. So it looks like it's going to be a two for one engagement. Wraith King looking for revenge on the way out, but I don't think he's going to be able to catch anybody right now. Yeah, no, that's not the case. Wolves are scouting him out, so they know exactly where he is too. On the bottom, though, Naga still being an obnoxious pest, and though, ho oh, oh, ho oh. Lesson for you kids at home, if you're running away and you're going to TP, right at the top of a high ground is a good place to do it, because if they're there, they have to walk all the way up here, and by the time they get there, you'll you'll be gone. It's a good way to do things. It's a good way to do things. Very intelligent. We saw OD escape there just because of it. Visage Bird's going to be forced to drop, as uh, the Slark was about to pick him off. Uh, they just get resummoned. He knew there was no way there was they were getting out of there, so uh, just resummons them instead, and we'll see where they're going. The Lycan Wolves are scouting these guys out pretty intently, so they know that uh, they, they know or uh, glimpse rather knows exactly where uh, Tom Plus Four are right now. I don't think they can do anything about it. I don't think they can contest any of their jungle camps or come in here and get any kills, but they know where they are. It's a good thing. Knowledge is power, friends. That Knowledge is power. Anyways, Slark and the Shadow Demon moving in towards the mid lane. Dishing out a little bit of damage. I don't know if they're going to get the tower right now. Batrider is in the neighborhood and he does have a Blink Lasso up and ready to go whenever he wants. Is he going to go for it? He's jumping in the trees. Alright, he's just trying to stack up the Napalm first. Not quite going for it uh, right off the bat. Wait, what? Does Dark Pack really purge... Um, what? Does it, really, does it really purge that? Hmm. Alright, Napalm can get purged. Today I learned, friends. Today I learned. Visage, man. He's toast. See ya, buddy. Nice knowing ya. There he goes. Gets a little bit too far forward. The Slark pounce and he evaporates. There he goes. 12 to 10, the kill score. But Blink Lasso in on the Slark. They're looking for him. But uh, defensive disruption. That was what I was talking about earlier. Really, really good against the Batrider. And the leap away from Slark will secure him a uh, safe passage out. Now the Dazzle does get caught by the by the um, by, by the ability, the astral imprisonment, and uh, he's gonna he's gonna fall for sure. Yeah, no way out of that one. He drops, and uh, now the Sark, yeah, he's got that Shadow Blade. He's gonna escape, and uh, so will the Shadow Demon. So eleven to ten. Oh, Sentry Ward. Are they gonna catch the Slark? They do have the shackles up. Um, does he have any way to get out of this? Oh, Yalti's butt gets disrupted at the same time. It kind of cuts down the time on which he can uh, escape with that ulti, but he's gonna be fine for now. Pops off that magic wand, so he's pretty much back at full, can do whatever he wants. Meanwhile, down on the bottom lane, Naga and Wraith King just going to work. Dishing out the damage, getting the towers, doing their thing. Not going to get it completely, but uh, definitely 
Definitely putting on the pressure. This Naga is most certainly going for a Radiance right now. 2,800 gold in the bank. I don't know what else she's going to buy. Um, I mean, she could just be saving up for like a full defusal or something, but I don't think so. I think this is going to be yeah, a grand old fire sword of burninating. Whoa, man! Who's dying where? I'm so bad today. Anyways, looking for the Lycan. Leash is up. He's toast. See ya, bud. A couple more auto attacks, and the Wraith King does secure that kill. Now, Shadow Demon comes in from the backside, and they do manage to pick off the Slark. The OD dishing out the damage. Now, looking towards that Wraith King. Shallow Grave is up, and he does have his ultimate to use. And uh, not going to use that last stun because he knows he needs that ultimate. There he goes. He pops it off. Meanwhile, the Dazzle has dr died on the back end, but the Wraith King, upon his resurrection, is going to uh, blink out of that and be completely fine for now. So, uh, a couple of kills being traded across the board. Uh, that was the Lycan and the Batrider in exchange for the Slark and the Dazzle. Not a bad trade for uh, Tom Plus 4. I think they got the better end of that. But, Shadow Demon, man. You need the damage. I don't know. Wait, did he have Disruption up? No. Oh. Oh, I know what happens. So he disrupted himself to get Illusion to dish out more damage onto that tower. And as a result, didn't have it to save himself from the OD. Gets picked off in the mid lane. Meanwhile, bottom... The Visage drops to the Naga as well, who is now sitting on a uh, metric fuckton of gold. That is now a measurement. A fuckton. Up in top. Lycan now trying to work towards his Necro book. He's uh, about 900 gold off of that. And uh, just trying to come up to top, see if he can find some farm. But no, there is a fish there instead. He's going to push him away. Now birds, being the OP pieces of shit they are, flying around with a net on them. God damn it, I hate that so much. These are the worst things in Dota. These these right here. These are Seriously, these are more broken than like release Earth Spirit. I hate him. I hate him, man. Anyway, Slark jumping onto the Lycan. Dishing out the damage. Is he gonna manage to finish the deal? I don't think so. Lycan's gonna back himself off and the wolves doing just a little bit too much damage for Slark. He's just going to have to back away into the fog so that he can regen, but the f wolves on him is going to mean that he won't be able to uh, regen for quite a while here. That's so annoying. Wow. <laughs> and finally, he knows the wolves are gone as uh, he starts to regen again. There's a little bit of pressure on the mid lane here. We got the Dazzle, the Shadow Demon, and the Skeleton King all pushing in towards this tower. They don't really have a big creep wave, though, and there is defense there. Now, the uh, Rod of Atos used on the Skeleton King. He's not going to be able to walk away from that. He does get Shallow Graved up, but I think he is caught anyways. The Dazzle is going to fall on the back end of that Wraith King. Looks like he might actually be able to find him, find his way out. Stun goes out on the uh, Shadow Demon as he force staffs himself away, and I think he's going to escape. Wraith King still back here. He doesn't have a TP. He has to walk out of here. He does have the uh, Invis room, so he can kind of make his way out. But uh, I'm just waiting for him to just like walk into a random like firefly or something and just die. And as Naga down here, the Batrider blinks forward and uh, gives Naga the warning she needs to walk herself away from this. She does have Song of the Siren and a TP, so I do not expect her to die there. Yeah, there she goes. She pops off the song, TPs, and she is out of there. In the mid lane, we got uh, action coming out on the Shadow Shaman, and uh, oh man, the blink away from the Wraith King and uh, with the Shadow Poison. Shadow Shaman going to die. The Wraith King surviving, not using up his ultimate. That's that's some, that's some intense shit right there. He's really, really flirting with death. He's going to walk into the tower. He'll probably die to this tower, actually. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Anyway, Slark jumping in on this OD. Is he going to manage to finish him off? I don't know. The defensive Astral try to get him out of this, but I don't think he has any mobility. Oh, he does have the Force Staff up now. Okay, so he's got that, but doesn't matter. The Wraith Fire Blast and the Pounce is going to finish him off. Now the Slark gets dragged along with the Bat Rider, and I think the pro they should probably just walk away. Okay, Wraith King finally spends his ultimate, and the Pounce in on the Bat Rider. They are going to get the kill for sure, and uh, Chicken is Slark, and uh, the Shackles are up on the Wraith King, but that's only going to be temporary. The Wraith Fire Blast flies out, and uh, the Shadow Shaman is going to fall as well. He did not need to be in the midst of that fight, and uh, really sloppy engagement there by Glimpse. Turns into three dead, and uh, potentially a lost tier two tower on top. They do have a little bit of momentum, a couple heroes there. The Wraith King is roaming back around, though, so he's not really got uh, when he needs to push in there. This Naga has not left bottom lane all game. Where's it? Yeah, she's got a Relic on the Courier. Just waiting for that... Uh, Full Radiance Gold, and then I think she'll start to move away from bottom and uh, throw her illusions out to uh, yeah, to each different lane. How does 
a metric fuckton compared to an imperial fuckton? Well, it's a really good question. If I hadn't failed high school math, I probably could have told you. I'm serious, man. I told my math teacher, I was like, fuck you, I'll just make video games when I grow up. And look at me now. I make video games for a living. But I still have to use all the math that she taught me and I don't remember, so I have to relearn it all, so. I guess one for her, one for me. We'll, we'll call it even. Anyways, blink away. Skeleton King gets himself out of the reach of that, uh, um, that, uh, flaming lasso. But there goes the Batrider, looking for it. He finds the Shadow Demon, drags him back. He's going to be toast. See you, buddy. There he goes. 16 to 19, your kill, kill total in 24 minutes is your game time. Both teams looking pretty damn even. If I don't mind, I'm going to uh, pull up these gold and XP graphs here and uh, show you where we're sitting at. About 10k advantage in the side of uh, Tom plus 4. Oh, my God, action! Oh, Batrider just gets melted, absolutely demolished here. Slark popping off that Black King bar, looking for more action. The Dark Pack pops off, he's going to pounce forward, gets a leash on the Visage, and Visage is toast. Two kills going out the way of the Slark, and uh, he's starting to get pretty damn ugly, my friends. 5-2-5 five, and five is his score, and he's got a Shadow Blade and a Black King bar to his name. Wraith King, underneath the Tier 2 Tower. Man, this guy, he's just, like, not giving a fuck. Uh, he's a stand-in, but, like, all game... He's just walking wherever he pleases, just doing whatever he wants, going under towers, stunning people, just, oh, God, he's, he's, he just gives no fucks. There's no team play here, there's no, like, it, it, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of coordination, it's just, like, non-fuck giving. Anyways, engagement on the mid lane, defensive astral is going to save OD for just a mere second, but, uh, oh my God, he does get out the Sand Age Eclipse just a second thereafter, and, uh, Lycan going to escape, but... The uh, OD and the Shadow Shaman are down. The Lycan is going to fall on the back end of this, and Batrider trying to run himself away with that Firefly. He does get leashed, and Slark will get the kill. Four heroes down, and uh, Tom plus four. Though they're getting eaten up by these Serpent Wards here, they should be just fine and uh, walk themselves away with uh, a successfully won engagement. Down the bottom lane, Naga is still being that royal bitch she is. And uh, yeah, there she goes. GG. GG is called by Glimpse. Not. Not showing the uh, best performance they could have here. They, uh, I don't know. I, I think the uh, the real uh, I think the real problem that game was not dealing with the Naga because Glimpse. I mean, they lost the tri lane and then they went. They spent so much time trying to get the Lycan back on board and getting getting him stuff. I think they really just needed to make a risky move. Like, you get the smoke ganks up, either smoke straight into Roche and just do Roche because you got the Lycan, or just try to get pickoffs, try to get that Naga Siren. I mean, she had this song up, she was playing really defensively all game, but you need to kill her. You need to make something happen. Even if it is just like three smoke ganks in a row on her when her ultimate's down, you just gotta go. Just go make something happen. Because with a lineup like this, where you got like the Bat, you've got the Lycan, you've got the OD, you're never going to just like stall the game out. And, uh, I mean, stalling the game out, I mean, Lycan, not a great late game carry, we talked about this. OD, he's decent, but not as great compared to Wraith King, Slark, or Naga Siren. And, uh, you know, just that, that split push from Naga mixed with the incredible four-man play from the rest of the team, um, just, just really made it, uh, made it happen. So, seeing as, uh, Tom plus four have actually taken this game, looks like that's gonna be it for tonight, folks. I'm going to confer with the admins in a moment here and just make sure that there's no other games for me to cast or that uh, this series isn't getting played out further. But I believe, since Tom Plus 4 won the game that I didn't cast, um, they are moving on. So uh, in terms of uh, brackets, let's, uh, let's bring this up here. Oh, 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 my God, I'm sorry. Come on. There we go. All right, so on your screen here, you are looking at the bracket. So... Uh, down here is what the match we were looking at. As I said, Glimpse went through Equal 5 and Rampage City to get here. And uh, Tom plus 4 feeders beat Team Lucid, farmed in Dangerous, and now have taken out Glimpse. So they will be moving on to face Xenocidal in uh, the semifinals. And the winner of that will be facing the winner of Los Mipos Hermanos and uh, whoever the hell wins this game, Arts of War or WCID. Um, and that will be the finals of your 82L Season 3 Open. 
By the way, this wonderful website that we're looking at here is the uh, Amateur Dota 2 League website, AmateurDota2League.com. Go check that out if you're uh, you know, an aspiring player, if you've got a team ready, if you're a hell a sponsor, anything. Check it out. We've got links to all of the active streams at all times. We've got a free agent page for people that want to play. Um, we've got communities, everything. It's all here. Check it out. AmateurDota2League.com. And of course, thank you to our sponsors, ProBuild Systems. These are awesome guys. Check them out as well. I have been Captain Canuck. And uh, if you give me a few moments, I will, be, I will make sure that there is no more content for tonight. And then I will confirm with you guys in just a moment. Thank you guys so much for watching. If it is, if it does turn out to be the last game of the night, then uh, please check me out on my other social media. It'll be twitch. Uh, well, it's twitch.tv slash CaptainConnectDota. Twitter.com slash Captain Connect Dota and YouTube.com slash Captain Connect Dota. Thank you once again, and I will see you next time. All right, folks, that is most certainly it. Uh, no more games for tonight, and I uh, don't know if I'm going to be playing much more Dota tonight, so I'm not going to be continuing the stream. But thank you so much for tuning in for the one game that we did have today. It was a fantabulous game, and both the teams played really hard. So definitely, um, definitely a great time. Thanks once again for watching. Check me out at all of the social media that I mentioned before, and throw me a follow on Twitch if you did enjoy my casting, because I would absolutely love to continue providing you with awesome content. So, cheers once again, have yourselves a great night, and uh, I will see you again next time.